Ken here, Old Man Writer. Got a couple of questions today that I'm trying to answer. Questions have been bugging me for a little bit since I've been working on these cadence type of things. And I've been really looking at the internet, going back to my cycling books, and actually digging into a couple of scientific papers to see if I can come up with answers to two questions. And that is, why do I tend to come down to a cadence of about 55 to 70 RPM when I'm chugging up the hills, or opposite, when I'm daydreaming right along the road, not doing anything? Why is that same cadence used by the little old ladies going to the market here in Thailand, or the high school girls chit-chatting as they drive around the neighborhood? My second question is, why do people keep saying higher cadences are better? Well, those scientific papers I talked about really have the answers, and I'm going to share that right now. Let's look at the slow cadence question. Why do we tend to go slow? Why do we tend to lock into that 55 to 75 RPM? Well, the science shows us that we're optimizing a very specific parameter, and that's oxygen efficiency, oxygen consumption efficiency, or VO2. Our bodies, for whatever reason we're designed to be this way, just find oxygen use most efficient when we're riding at that 55 to 70 RPM cadence, and it's as simple as that. So when we're out joyriding, chit-chatting, riding to the market, not paying attention, our bodies just kind of naturally go into this highly efficient oxygen use mode, and we ride at these slow cadences, which is the same cadence if you've ever been chugging up a mountain for a few minutes and you're totally out of air, you've hit the maximum, you've got to be optimizing oxygen efficiency too over anything else. You've got to move the air to our muscles. Makes sense. Same cadence, extreme effort ranges, optimization for oxygen use, the science proves it. Well, why are higher cadences better? What's happening there? Well, it turns out our bodies are optimizing something else. They're optimizing neuromuscular fatigue and neuromuscular efficiency. Our bodies simply operate more effectively in that parameter at the higher cadences. Now, we're using more oxygen, there's no question about that, but our biomechanics of the riding the bike, our efficiencies and our fatigues are optimized at these higher cadences. No question. The science proves it. Let me show you this in a graph, too. Well, here we are, looking at slow cadences and fast cadences and looking at the benefits of both of them. We can see the slow cadences, the oxygen efficiency is high, so we have a low VO2. For those fast cadences, science shows we have smaller stresses on our joints, we're less tired, lower glycogen intake, optimal application of force to pedals. Now, well, that's a subtle one. It's not maximum application of force to pedals, it's optimum, all the way around the pedal cycle. If we're going at a higher cadence, we can optimize what we're doing. So if we're joyriding and we're going that slow cadence, we're just kind of locked into that highly efficient, not paying attention mode. And it's the same cadence if we're upping our intensity and going up those big, long hills. Breathing as hard as we can, we need to optimize our oxygen efficiency. If we're going fast and we're just kind of being lazy or deliberately training on spinning type of things, we're using that fast cadence to keep stress off our joints and do all the good things that those high cadences do. And if we up the intensity, you know, that's our training goals. Get up high cadence, high intensity, really work it. So there are five things I think that we can learn from this. Kind of summarizing all that science, pretty complicated in long scientific papers to a couple of key points. First is that high cadences are optimizing neuromuscular efficiency in reducing neuromuscular fatigue. The science proves it. Those high cadences are probably protecting us from injuries as well because there's less strains on muscle bones, especially joints. I cannot find a scientific paper that actually connects injuries and, and cadence, but a lot of people say it, it kind of makes sense. Um, I, I think they'll go with that one. We also know that those slower cadences optimize oxygen efficiency. That VO2 measurement optimizes low uses optimum, low use of oxygen as possible to get our riding done. Training goals from this, probably time to continue to work on that increasing our VO2 max. The longer we can stay out of that oxygen optimization mode, the better we're going to be. We're healthier, we're breathing better, we're doing better all the way around. And it's probably also time to set a training goal 
to figure out how to up those cadences and do better in applying force all the way around the pedal cycle. I know I'm going to be working on that, and I know that these scientific articles have really helped me focus on why these two things happen, why there are, in fact, two different cadences that our body's clicking. Anyway, this is Ken from Old Man Rider. I hope that helps. Please like, please subscribe, and do look at these articles below. I put the links in the comments. Thanks much. See you later.